fast forward, WDM through the decades. During the early 1940s, there was a high demand for metal to aid the Second World War effort. Many abandoned steam engines and threshing machines were taken for scrap. Their disappearance did not go unnoticed. In 1942, the Battlefords Historical Society began discussing the preservation of this equipment. The committee was led by W.C. Wells, Evan Hardy, and Joe Phelps, the Minister of Natural Resources and Industrial Development at the time. They secured a $10,000 provincial government grant in 1946 to start an agricultural museum in the Battlefords. This would become the Western Development Museum we know today. Word spread quickly that they were collecting old farm machinery, and by 1947, the team had gathered a large enough collection from around the province to open a museum. They also had to secure storage space, in abundant supply after the Second World War. The Western Development Museum Act was passed on April 2, 1949, allowing the WDM to collect artifacts from all of Western Canada. Eventually, a Saskatchewan-only focus would be chosen. That same year, the first board of directors were appointed, and an annual grant of $15,000 was secured from the province. The WDM continues to receive funding from the provincial government for operations. On June 15, 1949, the WDM Saskatoon officially opened to the public for the first time. There was an admission fee of 25 cents per person to a maximum of $1 per family. As word spread, donors stepped up and more artifacts were added to the collection. The WDM grew to use storage hangars in North Battleford, Saskatoon, Yorkton, Swift Current, Moose Jaw, and Weyburn. Some of these depots would be turned into museums of their own. Since late 1940s, the WDM had a collections depot hangar at the Yorkton Airport. This location opened to the public June 17, 1951. That same year, the hangar at Swift Current would be dismantled and rebuilt in Saskatoon on 11th Street West. The WDM Saskatoon officially moved to this new home in 1952. George Shepard was named the first curator in Saskatoon in 1953 and would remain until his retirement in 1977. In honour of his illustrious career, many things at the Saskatoon Museum and the corporate office still bear his name today. Pioneer was launched in 1955 to coincide with the province's Golden Jubilee. The six-day show included demonstrations of steam and gas-powered farm equipment, blacksmithing, musical entertainment, and new exhibits. In Saskatoon, the show would include First Nations demonstrations from the nearby White Cap Dakota Nation. Volunteers have been an important part of the WDM since the beginning. The Yorkton Threshermen's Club, the Women's Auxiliary to the Western Development Museum, and the Pioneer Threshermen's Club at the WDM Saskatoon formed as early as the 1950s and still support the museum today. Quickly growing in popularity, it was in 1956 when the Saskatchewan Tourism Advisory Council awarded the three WDM locations as the number one tourism attraction in the province an honour that was received again many times in the years to come. Popular with tourists and dignitaries, the museum has attracted the likes of Prime Minister John Diefenbaker in 1958, and even Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 1959. That year, Pioneer was dubbed a show fit for a queen. With increased attendance, a growing collection, and increasing notoriety, the WDM needed to expand. 60 acres of land was acquired for a new WDM in North Battleford, and in 1961, a hangar was moved and reassembled for the new museum building. Construction then began on the Heritage Village. The opening of the new location coincided with the City of North Battleford's 50th anniversary in 1963. The 60s and 70s saw huge growth for the museums. All locations expanded or moved, a museum-side membership program was launched, and staff were hired to handle financial and administrative duties for all locations. This would be the beginnings of the corporate office. To celebrate Canada's centennial in 1967, a travelling exhibit was launched. The WDM contributed steam engines, antique vehicles and small artefacts to visit 30 communities across Saskatchewan free of charge. By 1971, new locations had been found in Saskatoon and Yorkton. The city of Saskatoon offered land beside the exhibition grounds where an indoor village called Boomtown was created to represent small town Saskatchewan around 1910. In Yorkton, a spot was selected for the new WDM location, followed by a sod-turning ceremony on September 8, 1971. Construction began on a fully heated 30 by 30 meter building, and the new WDM Yorkton location would open in 1972. 
From the beginning, the WDM has worked to innovate the way history is preserved and presented to the public. As early as the 1970s, the WDM joined a national program for computerized tracking of artifacts across the country. The WDM Moose Jaw was built in a similar fashion to the WDM Saskatoon. The size was needed to accommodate some of the WDM's largest artifacts and welcome the public June 26, 1976. The WDM also introduced the first formal school programs in the 1970s, a demonstration of pioneer harvesting techniques for grade 4 students aligning with the curriculum. Over the course of the program, more than 100,000 grade 4 students were taught about early Saskatchewan farming. Keeping the heritage skills alive is something the WDM has long supported. The WDM's longest-running course, the Steam Traction Engine Operations Training Course, was first given in 1959, and it's still offered today. The introduction to blacksmithing course started in 1988 in Saskatoon. Since then, the course has trained over 1,000 blacksmiths, and in 2023, was honoured with an award from Heritage Saskatchewan in the Living Heritage category. Both steam and blacksmithing courses continue to this day, with the Moose Jaw WDM operating Saskatchewan's only running steam locomotive. For Saskatchewan's 75th anniversary in 1980, the WDM recognized Saskatchewan innovators. The Made in Saskatchewan exhibits at each location showcased patented Saskatchewan innovations from 1905 to 1980. In 1984, the WDM Provincial Service Centre opened in Saskatoon, close to the museum. The 12,000 square meter building provided a new centralized home for artifacts that were still being stored in the old hangars throughout the province. It also provided a space for centralized administration and collection staff, shops for exhibit construction, and the Dr. George Shepard Research Library. Then in 1993, one of the largest conservation labs of its time in Canada was opened to better care for artifacts in the WDM collection. In the 1980s and early 1990s, the WDM was able to secure grants for museum improvements, additions, new permanent exhibits and renovations for all WDM locations. In the late 1990s, preparations began for Saskatchewan Centennial in 2005, leading to the WDM's most ambitious project in years, the creation of a unique exhibit for each WDM showcasing 100 years of Saskatchewan history. This multi-year project saw the last phase completed in 2012. In April 2015, the WDM welcomed its 10 millionth visitor since officially opening to the public in 1949. That same year, the WDM board looked to the future, creating a new logo and tagline, Saskatchewan Inspired. By 2017, a new vision statement was created, a Saskatchewan where everyone belongs and histories matter. The vision led to the collection of artifacts telling stories from previously underrepresented groups in our communities. In 2017, the Saskatchewan 2SLGBTQ Plus History Collection was launched. New artifacts from Saskatchewan's East Asian and South Asian communities were also collected. A partnership with the Saskatchewan African Canadian Heritage Museum and the Melford District Museum in 2022 resulted in a virtual exhibit about Dr. Alfred Shad, one of the first documented African Canadians to settle in Saskatchewan. On September 15, 2017, the WDM Board adopted a Statement of Intent regarding the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The WDM committed to adopting the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action in the strategic plan and to build partnerships with Saskatchewan's Indigenous communities. A partnership with the Kanawe Emek Child and Family Services in North Battleford added teepees to their village and offered traditional teachings that continue to this day. The WDM Saskatoon partnered with the University of Saskatchewan and Spirit Wrestler Productions for Duke of Boar Living Book Project, 120 years in Saskatchewan in 2019. A year later, this exhibit received the Governor General's History Award for Excellence in Museums, History Alive. Like millions of businesses across the world, the global pandemic closed the museums from mid-March through early August in 2020. The WDM pivoted to online offerings and virtual programs, they began collecting items that would have historical significance relating to this pandemic. Through the pandemic, the WDM worked on strengthening relationships and building capacity. The White Cap Dakota Nation re-established their relationship that began in 1955, resulting in the co-curated permanent exhibit, Wapahoska Oyate, Living Our Culture, Sharing Our Community, 
at Pioneera 1955-69. In 2023, the WDM and Whitecap Dakota Nation were honored to receive the Museums Association of Saskatchewan's Award of Merit for this exhibit. The WDM, with encouragement and guidance from the board, continues to seek out partnerships and knowledge to address the calls to action from the TRC and further expand reconciliation throughout the museums. The growth and progression of the Western Development Museum is due largely to the support of the volunteers, donors and sponsors throughout the years. The WDM appreciates and acknowledges them all as we pass our 75th year.